Let's go to assistive technology. So will be the last group of projects that we'll be discussing. Uh, assistive technology, uh, this was done in collaboration with the Vanderbilt Kennedy Center for Treatment and Research uh, Institute for Autism Spectrum Disorders, also the Next Steps program at Vanderbilt University, and also the Frist Center uh, uh, for uh, Autism on the Vanderbilt campus as well. Uh, the lead data scientist was uh, Miranda Shirk. She's a DSI senior data scientist uh, who's also in a conference and teaching right now and so unable to, uh, to join us live. But team, please introduce yourselves and tell us what you did. I'll go ahead and share my slides at the people. All right. So as Dr. Spencer Smith mentioned, this is a large uh, amount of projects uh, for assistive technology. And so the first one that we're going to start with uh, will be job coach question and answering. So I'll pass that off to Manu and Ricky. Oh, uh, yeah. So I, I just want you guys to recall back to the time that you first got a job and the acceleration of receiving the job offer letter, the anticipation of your first day, and then the overwhelming flood of information. From figuring out where to park, to understand your role, or to identifying the right person or specific questions, and everything felt like a maze. Now for students or the new hires with an autism spectrum, these challenges can be even more amplified. The nuances of workplace communication, the bridge of unfamiliar routines, and the sensory overload can be particularly daunting. But imagine if during those initial days, you had a personal assistant right in front of you, one that knew everything about your new job and could instantly answer any questions you had. No more waiting for replies, no more uncertainty, and no more embarrassments. And today I'll be happy to introduce the job coach question answering tool. So this project this year is a continuation of the project last year from DSSG 2022. Um, as we all know that this year, GPT-4, ChatGPT is a real game changer as compared to previous large language models like BERT-based models. So previously, user um, were required to upload documents and the model itself was hosted on AWS require, requiring heavy infrastructure. Our aim, is to make uh, the model easily accessible to both developers and users by providing predefined prompts. So additionally, we acknowledge that the previous model occasionally generated hallucinated answers, plausible uh, yet incorrect answers, and we are committed to addressing this issue with greater care. And I think GPT-4 is doing pretty good for that. So our goal is to improve the model based on the challenges we have identified last year. Not we, but like people work on this last year. And here is a general um, project pipeline. First, we have decided to leverage ChatGPT as a primary tool, uh, I guess, GPT-4, instead of Claude, Bard, or Poe. So GPT-3.5 should be sufficient to handle most situations, but of course, GPT-4 is better. Uh, then we did a lot of prompt engineering to test which one works the best, both best for neurodivergent groups and best for accuracy of the answers. We also have multiple evaluation rounds and testing, and we finally selected one best prompt and created our repo guidance for people. So now Min will talk more about the prompt and the guidance in greater detail. Yeah, in developing these prompts, uh, we understand underwent several evaluation stages. And first, we pinpointed the typical questions a new hire might ask, such as inquires about conduct of behavior and or where to eat lunch, because lunch is important for everyone. Uh, sample evaluation sheet on the left showcased some of these questions. Uh, when tested and scored the GPT's response for clarity, accuracy, and suitability for uh, autism spectrum students. After several evaluation, we introduced a new employee handbook to challenge our prompts even farther. Our refined prompt positioned GPT as a job coach and catering the specifically to the students on the autism spectrum. And we emphasize a brief job overview upfront and prioritize clear direct language. 
However, however, after a few tests, we found the response could be a, link, a bit lengthy, and hence we eliminated any unnecessary greetings or added text. And importantly, to avoid any misinformation, GPT was guided to admit any uncertainties and redirect the user to a supervisor when it doesn't know any answer to it. Um, then we have created a step-by-step -step instruction on how to use the job coach assistant on our readme so that it can be easily followed by the students. First, we provided a preset link that already includes prompts and ready to use. And second, when students simply click and continue the chat, they can upload the handbook. And then third, if they wish, they can generate a shareable link and either for the future reference or to aid their colleagues. Lastly, it is ready to go and students can ask any questions they have about the job. Um, we know that the prompts are not perfect. Uh, we are aware that the prompts can be further improved for the quality answer and more suitable for the students with autism. After the project was over, we realized within a short amount of time, the new technology has evolved. Now that we have a code interpreter, various plugins and PDF chatbots, we expect that we can leverage those tools even further to perform better on querying the documents. These new tools might even surpass our initial accomplishments. Um, this is the end of the job coach project and thank you. All right, so uh, next we're going to move on to the email tone transfer project. <clears throat> Within the context of the realm of professional interactions, it is increasingly apparent that a notable proportion of electronic correspondences, specifically in the form of emails, do tend to exhibit a certain proclivity towards superfluous and gratuitous verbiage, thereby rendering them unduly verbose and conspicuously lengthy. Now I know what you're all thinking. What in the world did he just say? Um, yeah, the gist of it is that the professional world is full of unnecessarily wordy emails. Uh, while some of us may be able to digest these emails, uh, for those who are neurodivergent or even those who just do don't speak English as a first language, um, it can be a lot more difficult to do that. With this in mind, we wanted to create a way to kind of cut through the flowery language that people tend to use when writing more formal emails and just show the important points, uh, what the email is meaning to say in very blunt terms. Uh, it was only natural that we just do the reverse as well and provide a tool to generate a professional email from the basically just the message that the user wants to convey. Uh, luckily, there is actually a pre-existing service that helped us. Uh, Poe is a website that allows users to interact with many different AI chat models. Uh, it also provides a chatbot creation function, which is pictured here. Um, it lets users tailor a chatbot to a specific purpose. We opted to use this to build our email assistants. Um, and we discovered that rather than one chatbot designed to both summarize and generate an email, it was best to separate the two functions. Uh, Katrina is going to demonstrate the usage of one of these bots. And so it is a video. Go ahead and play that. Can people see the video? It's like simple text. As mentioned previously, one of our primary goals was to create a tool that would translate simple text into an email or message that fit into the user's desired tone and context. And thus, the email assistant zero bot came into being. Let's assume that I'm a computer science student looking for an extension on my assignment that is due tomorrow. I can specify the name of the sender, aka me, and the name of the recipient that all I have to do next is simply copy and paste my crafted message into an email and press send. So here's the message that I would like to send the bot. I go ahead and just press send. And then it generates the subject, um, a well-crafted email with the appropriate format. And all I need to do next is make sure that everything in the email itself is appropriate and that there are no extra details that are not actually relevant to my day-to-day -day life. And then I can go ahead and just send this email without having to worry about anything else. This tool also extends to multiple other arenas of life, whether you're looking to send a more casual message to a friend or a colleague, or looking to apply for a job or schedule an interview with a recruiter. 
It has multiple functionalities as long as you ensure that you provide as many details as outlined in the chat prompt, which can be seen right over here. So making sure that you specify the name of the sender, the name of the recipient, the relationship, the primary subject, the intended tone, and any additional information that you see fit. All right. As mentioned previously, Okay, so along with the chat prompt that you saw earlier, there is also a hidden prompt that underwent multiple iterations before we landed on this particular paragraph. We wanted to ensure that the basics were covered, so you can see those are highlighted there, and that the bot would include all of the appropriate information to ensure that the best and least time, or ensure the best and least time consuming experience for the user. So now Minu will introduce the next tool for this project. Um, yeah, the, it would be on like exactly opposite situation. And someone has kind of explained the situation I was in. Like as an intuition, I was, I have an experience of receiving a flowery email that never quite get to the point and but are polite. And at the same time, it's not entirely clear. I remember one night uh, staring at an email, the words were familiar, yet the meetings feels just out of reach. Uh, my, now, my night were spent just pouring the dictionaries and trying to discern whether the phrase was genuine or shadow with the sarcasm. Recognize this challenge, we did develop a solution for everyone who faces similar struggles and I would like to introduce the email time transfer. And this is, us. I will start with the demo of what email uh, summarization tool do. All of which you can do, simply paste the email content into the box. Here I brought the example of the polite, flowery email that never get to the point but are not entirely clear. Keep in mind, this is a bit exaggerated. Um, in summary, uh, this is an email about Jake who has been invited to a wedding in a distant city and is requesting time off for work on July 27 and 28. He has spoken with colleagues to ensure his duties are covered during his absence and is open to making any additional preparation if needed. Which how the ball condenses it without losing any assumption. Um, the output is summarized, easily understandable text with all the essential information. We see that Jake is requesting for the time off of July 27 and 28 due to the wedding he's attending in the third city. And then he has talked to his colleagues that his work is covered. I, I hope you enjoyed me. You guys enjoyed this demo and this is the end of the demo. Thank you. Yeah, that was a little demo and uh, I would like to explain what is under the hood. Similarly, uh, we have a uh, problems hidden in the bots. And then under the hood, we have instructed the chatbot to summarize the email into text format and while maintaining the sender's voice. And then when testing the prompt, we saw the chatbot generating an unnecessary sentence like greetings and closing remarks. And we specifically instruct to include, exclude those and printing out the easily understandable in everyday language um, to do the task. All right, so next we'd like to introduce resources for our neurodivergent community members. Before we dive into these resources, let's take a moment to just understand what neurodiversity truly means. So it's the recognition that each individual's brain functions uniquely and that these differences contribute to the rich tapestry that is our society. So some background on this. Um, while our initial goal for this project was really to create a sentiment analysis bot that could recognize the tone of an email or message. In our brainstorming session, however, we discovered a robust tool called Goblin Tools. And so if people have not explored that yet, it is great, um, but it had already implemented this functionality better than we could have. So this led us to decide to switch to a project that would involve creating a wiki where various resources could be crowdfunded and updated as a live document. So that's what we're going to be discussing today. So the wiki is going to comprise of the following pages, and I'm now going to pass it on to Ricky and Savan to explore some more of the invaluable tools that we've gathered and how we decided to break, the, break them up into pages. 
All right, so in this project, uh, we're writing about a wiki, helping neurodivergent groups, and the homepage will definitely give a general overview of neurodiversity. Um, so what is, what is about neurodiversity and uh, a guide to use the wiki. So a list of resources. So as you can see in the sidebar, and Savan will talk more about how each the subtitles will be. Okay, so the first uh, wiki page that we're looking at is AI powered tools. Um, these are a combination of tools that are created by our own team and ones that are already available elsewhere online. Uh, some of these may be targeted towards neurodivergent people, but a lot of them can just be useful to anyone. The next page is neurodiverse communities. Um, it directs users to various organizations that have made it their focus to assist neurodivergent people by offering resources to strengthen their skills in the uh, professional life. Um, they have resources uh, with information to educate the public, and there's just much more. Um, can't get into it all. <laughs> Um, the career training education page contains a very long list of resources, uh, all related to education and professional life and specifically tailored towards neurodivergent people. And the social skills page is kind of the complement to the career training education page. Um, the resources here are generally more useful in social or casual settings as opposed to professional or education settings. Uh, because this project was relatively simple, uh, we feel that we've accomplished what we set out to do. From here, there are really two main things to do. We need to add more resources as we encounter new ones and relocate the entire wiki to be hosted on the Frist Center for Autism and Innovations website. Was muted. Okay, so next uh, we're going to be talking about the planning assistant. So imagine, imagine this, you're starting the semester, you have five different syllabi, and you know you're going to have exams at certain points of the semester. How do you know what you need to do first or what you need to look at first? Each of us working on this project represent a broad range of disciplines and backgrounds, as well as stages of our careers. Despite these differences, we all had the collective motivation to create a tool that would simplify the start of our semesters and to potentially help others as well as in their academic and work life journeys. So some background on this. Uh, our primary goal for this project was really to create an automatic syllabus scanner that would accomplish the following tasks. First, we wanted to ensure that we could find every date in the syllabus that we had in our um, schedules, regardless of the formatting. Next, we wanted to really retrieve the details about the assignments, readings, exams occurring on a particular date. And then finally, we wanted to, to create a calendar file for those dates with descriptions of what is due when. So I'll pass it on now to Savan for him to explain the calendar extraction process. Yeah, it's actually, uh, it's really nice. So not only can we have a syllabus be uploaded, pull out all of the dates and tell you what to do on that day, we'll also provide a file for the user to download and it'll automatically put these class events into the calendar. Um, the one limitation of this is that it doesn't yet support specific time ranges. So if an assignment is due at 9 p.m. or 11 p.m., that's all the same. It's just everything, everything is a full day event. Here is an example of what these events can look like. Uh, so on Thursday, November 18th, the syllabus mentions that assignment seven is due. Uh, the subject of, of that assignment is the pre-analysis plan. It is an individual submission, and there is a data analysis workshop, and all of that is reflected in this calendar event. Now a demo from Eleanor. Hi everyone, so this is just a quick demo of the Pipeline Planning Assistant Notebook, um, which I'm just going to run through briefly all the functions and the libraries that we use and how the user will actually interact with this on the back end. So the first thing that the user will do is upload their syllabi. In this case, I just uploaded one syllabi, which was for a political psychology class I took back in 2021. Um, the next thing the user will do is install and um, load the necessary libraries. This next function here, um, we used AI assisted coding and Miranda um, especially uh, helped tweak this and perfect it um, to extract the dates from the syllabi because we had issues with the um, prompting to extract. 
from there, the this function will create a pandas data frame from the extracted dates and events. And then as we'll see here, when you run that function, you will actually get a list of all the dates and events from the class. And I've already gone and run this whole notebook just to make this uh, recording as quick as possible, but running through the rest of this, um, this is actually using LangChain and OpenAI's um, capabilities to actually get the context for the events. And so to make the um, ICS export more uh, helpful and have more context for the user. Um, but the runtime on this function is still about four minutes, which would just be too long for the purpose of this demo. Um, but essentially, again, you would just insert the file path and then run this function and you would get another data frame, which would be more comprehensive. And then this last function here is to actually export the ICS file. Um, again, we use AI assisted programming for this. Um, essentially, what it does is convert every um, date in the pandas data frame to date time format and then from there it uses the ICS module to actually create an ICS file um, and then when you actually run the uh, function down here it will download and it downloads to your local um, drive and Google Cloud app or your, your call app drive um, so this will it does not download directly onto your local drive so what the user will need to do if they're working with this back, back end pipeline notebook is actually go in and download this file and then from there you can import it. And as you can see here, this is an example of what one of the assignments would actually look like. And so, yeah. Hi, everyone. So finally, we need to combine all these components together and put it into a UI interface, which is again, still gradial based. As you can see, the user can first upload the syllabi, could be one or multiple files, then simply click the generate timetable button will generate the visualization table showing all important events. So exam or paper due. Um, here is how it looks like for the timetable. Oh, you can see there might be some duplicates and some other issues. Uh, we may still need to work on the prompts and uh, the regex thing to improve that. So like um, the wrong or non-relevant dates or catching like the example dates could still happen. Um, but well, going back to the UI. So finally, you can export this as uh, the .ics file, which is the calendar format. You can add into your Google calendars or other calendars. Um, and to better visualize the events and the timelines, we also explore potential interactive visualizations for timeline plots. Yeah, so I can comment a little bit on that. In addition to the UI, we wanted to explore kind of other ways um, of visual organization, specifically a dynamic interactive timeline, which is what you see here. Um, although the output isn't completely formatted yet because it wasn't fully put together, um, you can see how on a dynamic timeline, which you can actually zoom in and out, not specifically here because this is just a picture, how um, you can see all of your different assignments and important dates for this semester for a class. And you can even put multiple classes into this so that when you click on different assignments, you can see the date that they're due. And um, so, yeah, that was just another additional kind of thing we wanted to explore. If we wanna go further on this project, uh, both the UI, and this visualization will eventually be embedded into the Frist Center's website. Uh, so we have kind of a central location for these resources. And finally, I'll pass it back to Katrina to give some final notes on the assisted tech projects. Yeah, so um, what was really the point of all of this? Well, through this project, we really wanted to simplify and ease uh, the way for students to um, really be able to take full advantage of their college opportunities or in the workplace and to fully participate in their learning environments without being burdened by the difficulty of schedules and syllabi. And the neat thing about this is that it especially helps students with potential executive dysfunction or with organizational challenges, but it can even help students who may consider themselves to be incredibly organized as well. So we feel like this will really help with a lot of just different avenues and free up your, your mind to focus on other aspects of your life without having to worry about syllabi and dates and schedules and so on. So yeah, thank you.
fantastic. Uh, the, the, the reach of work that you're able to do with this with this project to extend the the, the very preliminary work that we were able to do last year is is really quite striking. I'd like to open up right now for for questions or for comments about this project. I'll make a comment about the about the project. The preliminary work, uh, you know, a, a lot of the exploration of the preliminary work last year was actually carried out uh, by one of our uh, uh, Next Steps interns. Uh, so Next Steps is a program of Vanderbilt University to provide a college experience uh, to those with uh, developmental delays or perhaps on the autism spectrum, you know, but things that would actually keep them out of being able to take a full course load, but this is meant to, to provide much more of the experience. And one of our interns actually provided some of the early work on this and provided the feedback, which led to many of these ideas, uh, you know, identifying the challenges that he had when he first started the uh, internship with us. And so seeing us being, being able to get to the point to really open up the workplace to folks that otherwise would have real challenges in doing that is, is so exciting and so heartening. So thank you so much for all of your work. That is it for our showcase. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone here for all of their extraordinary work over the summer. The impact that this work will have uh, will go far beyond uh, what you can uh, possibly imagine. For most of these projects, this work is going to be made open source, and that means that this is going to be open for others to use and to extend. Uh, so think about all the capabilities that you've developed and think about the resources that we've had for us during the summer, very few other schools have these types of resources. So by your work this summer, you've empowered schools and universities and uh, folks who want to join the workplace and folks who want to participate fully in school but have these challenges, uh, young readers who can do better for their entire life because they've actually had uh, uh, excellent dialogic questioning, uh, instructors that will be able to, to use uh, AI in their, in their, in their classrooms. Uh, all of these are going to be made possible by your work. So thank you so much, both as chief data scientist, but also just as a human and thinking about all the good that you're going to be doing. You've really put the good into data science for social good. So congratulations. Thank you again. I couldn't be more proud. Enjoy the rest of your summer. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.